Liam Neeson has actually expressed interest in returning to the Star Wars universe as Pycon Jin for the new Obi Wan show being developed for Disney Plus. I'm excited about this. I think it's very cool. I'm assuming he would return as a Force ghost. Are you guys excited? Go ahead, Trey. Yeah, I I, I would say I I I didn't I don't think I appreciated the character enough until I watched the Taken movies. I'm a big fan of those, uh, especially the first one. I mean, he's such a badass in it, right? But it's kind of a realistic take on somebody that's really a badass. Um, so I actually remember thinking like, or, or seeing somewhere like, holy shit, that's the dude from The Phantom Menace. Um, so I have a huge appreciation for the character. And when I went back and watched it, just his his delivery and how calm he is, uh, it, it, it's really true to, to Liam Neeson and also the character. Um, I, I think this is awesome. I, I, I would hope that he, I don't know how they would do it, but I don't want to see him as a force ghost. I want to see him like fight Darth Maul again. Like I want to see him running around with, with, with Obi-Wan uh, hunting down some freaking Sith, man. Like that would be, for me, I think that would be really, really cool. Is that possible or can they do it? I don't know, but um, I, I'm really, really excited about this. But I got excited. And I think I was texting you guys when they said that Hayden Christensen was coming back, you know, to reprise his role in the Obi. Like, and I'm sure a lot of people hate that. I'm like, man, that's awesome. Like, bring bring those guys back, Tony. It doesn't look like you like that too much. Uh, but there, there. I guess it's a nostalgia effect, you know. Uh, and I have always kind of liked Hayden Christensen. Um, I, obviously, the script and everything in the prequels and. Uh, his he was acting, a good. You could argue he was about a that, good. But. If you see his movies prior to that movie, he's yeah. a legit actor. Yeah. But the, that those the prequels ruined everybody. Natalie Portman is like an Academy Award winning actress, and she was terrible in the prequels. Right. All the actors were the only one that made it through unscathed was um, was Obi Wan. Yeah. Was Ewan McGregor? Yeah. Uh, he's the only one. Everyone else was a bit of a disaster. Tony. Even Samuel think? Jackson oh, sorry, Chris, was a little bit. I was gonna say even Samuel Jackson was a bit rough in that in the in the prequels. It's still weird that he was even in that. It just doesn't seem like he fit no, the character. A, and and it, 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 he's great. It's not. Yeah. But it's 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 I guess because of how much he's been in, it's like well Samuel Jackson is playing this character. It's not the character. Maybe that's more on me than. No, than no, you're right. Him. All you see is that all you see is Samuel Jackson. You keep waiting for him to say. <laughs> You know, there's snakes in this motherfucking, you know, whatever. Like, yeah. you don't you, you yeah. don't see him as like a fucking Jedi. I mean, I get like the idea for him was that with his purple lightsaber, meaning that he sort of like was a little bit one foot in the dark side, one foot in the light side. He kind of. Oh, was it? You know, oh, OK. Towed, towed, yeah. Know. Yeah. So, so his whole thing was he sort of towed the line and he always had sort of the possibility that maybe he could go, you know, a little bit one way or another. Um but um, and so for that reason, he might have been a good pick. But I always thought he was really stiff, and he like he looked like he was like I don't know, like he'd never acted yeah. before in some of the scenes. And, and he's great, kind of ridiculous. I just wanted him to say, "I'm a Jedi, motherfucker." Yeah, I'd have been okay with that. Tony, what do you think? Uh, I mean, I don't know, man. Uh, I'm excited <laughs> about the series. I haven't done enough research to know. Like uh, where this uh, Obi Wan series is gonna go? I like Ewan McGregor. When Tony uh, says I don't know, man, that's like a uh, yeah, yeah. That's not a good. That's not a good <laughs> sign. For I the mean, series. you know, I could be swayed on this one though. So it's gonna, it's gonna, one. it's gonna take place on Tatooine. It's part of okay. as he his mission to. Now I think it's gonna. My assumption is it'll take him off Tatooine, but my understanding is that he'll be it'll it'll be partly based on his time getting settled there. So Tony, you said you uh, you you haven't really been on board with the series to begin with, with the uh, with the Obi Wan series to begin with. Oh yeah, I mean, just don't know. no no, I just don't know much about it. I mean, I like Ewan McGregor enough, and I liked his portrayal as Obi Wan enough to to want to watch this. Uh, I just I, again, it goes along everything that I've said since we started talking about this. That it's the same old story, just told right. a different way. Like. Right. So we're going to go back and we're going to, we already know what happens to him at the end. Like he finds out how to become one with the force and then uh, become, you know, the light side and then become the force ghost when he disappears, when he's fighting Vader in, uh, you know, oh, on, the, right. on the Death Star or whatever. But uh, so, I, I mean, I don't know. So to bring back another person that's dead, it's just kind of like, all right, which I like Liam Neeson. 
Um, uh, me and Tish love him in Love Actually. That's a movie we tend to watch quite a bit. And uh, liked him as, a, as Aslan and uh, with Lion, Witch, in a Wardrobe and all that kind of stuff. And I liked him in the Taken movies. And I liked him as Qui-Gon. So, uh, but like you said, like, what, what are you going to get out of him? He's not going to be alive. He can't be alive. I mean, unless they just want to, I don't know. No, maybe he's he, not. He, he won't. Sur- he survived yeah, the pit to uh, the no. the Sarlacc pit or whatever the fuck happened with uh with Boba Fett falling into the mouth of um the snake monster shit in the sand. I don't know. I just like he's dead, man. Let's just let it go. Let's like let's bring in some new characters. Let's, you you're already bringing back Obi Wan. Cool. Tony okay, wants I'll new bring, stories. Bring some new Tony people. I want new, new characters. I want new. new. But I mean, there's a million people out there that love this stuff. So uh, let's see what happens. I mean, I mean, in a couple episodes into this, I may be like, this is the best fucking show ever. <laughs> like, I don't even want to watch The Mandalorian anymore. Give me more Ewan McGregor and uh, ghost Liam Neeson running around killing people. Like, let's do that. I, I, I don't care how they bring him back, how stupid it is. I just want them to bring him back, not in the first one, <laughs> whatever. I'll, I'll, I'll just, I'll be blind to the, the plot holes that they introduce, whatever. I mean, they're doing so many de-aging technology things now. Maybe they, it'll, he'll be back in flashbacks. Like maybe they'll show like super young you and McGregor going through with. It's a good with, point. With, but then I that. guess technically at this point they'd probably have to de-age both of them. Because, so you know Liam Neeson's like in his seventies now. So I, I got yeah. something. How about him and Obi Wan fighting Darth Maul and Darth Vader? Could that happen? Y'all don't care about that. I'd be hyped for that though. I mean, I don't uh, know. so they I would they, they already get, they already go it. through. They already go. The problem is that they've already got what happens with Darth Maul and Cannon. Oh the, right, um, the Rebel the Clone series. Wars and yeah. the Rebel series. Yeah. So um, there's. Uh, I don't know that there'll be room to do something that crazy. I do think. I think I read something though about the series that there would be a clash between one more fight between Obi Wan and Darth Vader. Mm-hmm. So that oh. I think they are. I think they are writing that into the series. Um, the other thing I hope they do is fix the plot hole at the beginning of. A New Hope, where Obi Wan says, "I don't remember owning a droid," and he has no recognition of R two D two, when R two D two has been with him through like tons and tons of his adventures. So there, I, I'm, I think that's the other interesting thing about both the Mandalorian and series like this is they can begin to sort of fix the plot holes in in really creative ways um, because people are so obsessed with continuity. And Star Wars has done such a poor job with a lot of the different continuity stuff from the very beginning. Okay, so to, to what you just said, I agree. And I think one way, and, and this is just, you know, my opinion. So uh, Grogu, right, has has kind of like a, a blank in his memory from when he hit his powers. So maybe when uh, Obi-Wan goes to Tatooine and tries to watch over Luke and does all this stuff, he he does the same thing. Like he... he loses power right he's got to hide his force so no one can find him uh vader's out there he knows that like so he he gets gives gets rid of a part of himself and that's why he forgets he ever had a droid it could be they're gonna have to come up with something but I like um, trademark i, 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 I like do it. think it's interesting i do think it's call, interesting that they have the ability now call kathleen lose. kennedy <laughs> she won't listen yeah no <laughs> It'll be interesting. All right. I'm excited for it, though. All right. So moving on to the last part of the night, which is really going to be the playoff predictions for week two of the playoffs. <laughs> <laughs>